you look at this fight and look, they fought. I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and say they did it. They, they, they both fought and they both fought hard. It's just the way they fought made it to where it was not that fight where you had moments that you were like, Oh my God, look at what's happening. And things you had momentum shifts and changes. The momentum really didn't shift all that much. If you were going to look for the, you know, the biggest shifts of a momentum was really the takedowns that Duplessis was able to get, but he wasn't able to do a damn thing with any of them. And Strickland always got back to his feet. It was a moment that Duplessis had the opportunity to do something, but it always slipped by because he wasn't able to keep Strickland in there. It was almost like a waste of time in the fight. There, there wasn't that action going on. I also thought that, you know, when you looked at it, both guys really ended up with a respect for the for their opponent. And that's that's the way it's supposed to be. That is what happens when you fight something that's good. Duplessis thought that he could run through Sean Strickland, I think. And he realized right away, oh my God. No, he's a lot faster with his jab. It's a lot stiffer than I thought. He's a lot more difficult to reach out and touch. And I have to open up and put myself into danger to try to get those things done. I think in reverse, Sean Strickland had that where he looked at Duplessis and thought, he's open, I'm just going to keep hitting him with straight shots and it's going to end up hurting him to the point he breaks down and I take over the fight. And it was, he learned. If there's one thing that you've got to give DDP, you have got to give him credit of, he has got a chin. He is tough as hell. He will walk through the storm to try to deliver what he does. He's open to be hit. And eventually, usually when we have a fighter like that, somewhere it's going to go away. It's going to end up being where he loses that ability to take those shots that he can now take. But look, he can take shots. And he's, you know, he reminds me of Chuck Liddell in the fact that he's got a, he's got a granite chin, man, because he took some big shots and never really faltered as far as being hurt this whole fight you know when they sit there and they go back and forth about you know who won who lost i'm gonna be honest i had strickland winning the fight yeah okay but the entire fight was based off of volume because there was never a point where you know and well i'll get into the whole thing with dominic cruz and his 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 illusion of damage <laughs> but you know a cut is a one punch thing. That's all the judges are giving credit for, unless it gets worse than which Sean's did, but it was off of a headbutt, a clash of heads. So, you know, you don't give it any, any, you know, any thought as far as that. But you take a look, and I thought that overall, Strickland had more volume. He, he threw more shots. He landed more shots. The jab was his most effective tool throughout. It absolutely did damage to the left side of, Duplessis' face, which is, you know, because Duplessis kept turning his head that way, but it's a vol it's a volume count. I never saw Duplessis do something that I thought really hurt Sean. I never saw anything that I thought Sean really hurt DDP. It was a back and forth volume match. Was it exciting? I was entertained, but it wasn't the fight that I wanted. Mm -hmm. I wanted both of them to go to the center and just start going after it because yeah. of that whole buildup and everything. And they both had too much respect for their opponent. They realized that they were fighting something good and they had to fight a smart and tactical fight. And they both did. I agree with you. Um, the problem that I saw from this fight, look, look the, to me, the fight, I was entertained. It was back and yeah. forth. There was moments. And I look for me, it was more of the entertainment of these guys are pretty much evenly matched. And what I saw also was that they are very, they have a lot of respect for one another. And they, if they didn't have it, they found it in the first two and a half minutes of that fight. Drickus realized he wasn't going to be able just to just walk down uh, Sean and hit him with big shots because he was slightly out of range and making him miss. And then Sean realized that look, when he did catch him a little bit, even over the hands, there was probably a little bit more power than he thought. Okay, this guy's got more power than I expected. He's got clubbing type power. Not really like knock me out power, but it was more like clubbing, knocking me off thudding. balance. Yeah, thud. Yeah, knocking me off thud. balance, keep making me lose my rhythm. What happens in that type of fight though, John, and I was saying this on Twitter yesterday, is what happens is you have two fighters that are fighting 
they're not fighting the way they normally fight. And so Dave just did a marathon today. Let's give him a hand, by the way. A half marathon. Very nicely done. Half marathon hour and, for a podcast. Hour and what, Dave? What'd you run it in? Hour and 30? Uh, yeah, an hour 27. Hour 27. Very impressive, my man. Very damn good. So look, in running that, Dave can maybe contest, attest to this because I'm, I'm very similar to this way, is when I run, don't talk to me. Just run alongside me if you can't keep up. And, and when we're running, I just want to run at a normal, I want to run at my pace. When I try to run at somebody else's pace that's running with me, it makes me more tired. No matter if it's slower or Especially fast. if it's slower. My body's just not built to go <laughs> that slow, you know? And especially like if I was to run next to you, I just couldn't do it. I'd be just destroyed. It would just kill me. Um, but, <laughs> but the thing is, when you have two fighters, like Sean Strickland is a pressure fighter. He got out of his rhythm last night. He was put on his back foot and made him feel uncomfortable. He thought he'd be able to outstrike him. You know, basically make him miss, make him pay. And Drickus was afraid of getting countered because he realized Sean was always right outside the realm. So he didn't just walk him down trying to land the big shots. Sean was always right outside of the distance. And Drickus realized he was leaving himself wide open. And Sean was able to capitalize sometimes. But then also when Drickus did land, even over the arms, even on the body, whatever it was, it knocked Sean off balance, which ruins your rhythm on your counter striking. So it was a combination of the two things, which is why we didn't get the best fight out of either one because they weren't fighting their normal style. Sean Strickland with Izzy was able to walk him down and make him miss or stay right outside of range and then try to touch him back. And the most effective thing in the Izzy fight, as well as with this fight, was the jab. I'm, yeah. I gave it to Sean Strickland because of the jab. So I was like, oh, well, all he did was land jab. This is an MMA fight. I don't give a crap. That's the thing <laughs> that did the most damage. That's the thing that landed Absolutely. the most. In if I do the and I'm not I'm not someone that does punch stats. But when I'm looking at this, like that jab was the most effective weapon in the whole fight. Most of, most effective tool throughout the entire fight for, for both, both fighters. fighters. And in that being said, I gave it to Sean. I had Sean running rounds one, two, and five. I had him losing That's rounds. Exactly what I had. I had him losing rounds three and four. And, and, it, and it, it looked like that Sean got tired in round three and four, trying to fight that style of fight, letting Drickus push him around. Whereas yeah, Sean no doubt was about usually it. the guy doing the you pushing. Can, you could hear it from you know Coach Nixick. Yep. You know, end of round four, he says, "Man, I I don't like I don't like what I'm seeing in that round. I don't I don't like what we're doing. I mean, we need to get back." And, and Eric was doing the exact thing that you need to do with someone like Sean Strickland is straightforward in his face, telling him, "Hey." Knock that shit off. That is not who we are. That is not the way we're going to win this fight. I need you to do this. It's the right way to, that's not for every fighter. For Sean Strickland, that's exactly, and Strickland went out for the most part in the fifth round, and I thought Duplessis fought a good good round too. He was going after him, but you take a look at it, Strickland was able to change those little things that were upsetting him in that third and fourth round, and he was able to pull things back, and he landed the cleaner, crisper shots in the round and i gave him the round but it was i i have no problem with the fact that ddp no. won the fight it was close no, no, it wasn't a it was robbery a at all oh my no. god i start to hear that stupid word of robbery yeah. it was close it was a close fight and it's really a, it's really dependent upon what is it that you are looking at that you're giving credit to and obviously the you know the judges that you know the two that gave it to uh, Duplessis, was, they were giving it to the big moments of the big swinging mm -hmm. shots. And they thought that that had more effect and more impact in the fight.